And we've actually done the lab for this. I believe we did this last time, right? Exactly, last time we, we were here, we did the lab with RC circuits. So um, RC circuit is whenever you have a circuit where a resistor and a capacitor are in part of the same circuit, which is really most realistic circuits in modern day electronic circuitry, right? You have some resistors, you have some capacitors in there, and you close the circuit, and what happens, the current begins to flow. The current begins to flow, and as the current begins to flow, it builds up charge on the capacitor, right? So here's what we expect to happen just from logically thinking about the situation. When you're charging an RC circuit, we expect initially, when you first close it, the capacitor is uncharged. So we initially expect the current to be high. You close it, the current, the initial current, the initial current, we expect it to be V over R. Right? But what ends up happening as the capacitor charges, charges, builds up charge, it begins to act like a battery which is opposed to this battery. You see? Because this battery has the negative here and the positive here. This capacitor is, has the positive on the left end. So it's opposing this guy. So eventually what happens is this guy begins to oppose this. The current begins to drop. And you get to a certain situation where this thing acts like as if it was a battery, right? Pushing the current that way. So if the, when the voltage of this, when the voltage across the capacitor equals to the voltage of the battery, so we expect the voltage of the capacitor to eventually reach to the voltage of the battery. At that point, what's the current going to equal? Exactly. Yeah. Current approximately zero. Okay. So what we want to know now is how does the current change as a function of time? We know that it's going to start as V over R. And how is the current going to change as a function of time? And how is the charge on the capacitor going to change as a function of time? We know that initially the charge of the capacitor is zero. Then it builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up until the voltage of the battery is equal to uh, the voltage of the capacitor. And then the charge of the capacitor doesn't build up anymore. So if you want to know how, did, how did they change as a function of time, what we do is we develop the equation of this. We go, we do the Kirchhoff's loop. We, we gain positive VB, the voltage of the battery. We lose IR going through the resistor. And we lose, going across the capacitor, we lose VC. And that's equal to the back to zero. And the voltage of the capacitor is equal to, we take this to the other side, is equal to the charge of the capacitor divided by the capacitance of the capacitors. That's by definition. C is equal to Q over V. So V is equal to Q over C. And the current in the circuit is the time rate of change of the charge on the capacitor. I equals dQ dt. So what does this look like for those of you who are in differential equations? This looks like a good old differential equation, right? So if I want to know how Q changes as a function of time, so this looks like this kind of a differential equation. Something. This is something, right? So let's say something 
call it k times y prime plus this is something else call it uh, w times this is y is equal to some constant I call it bb here so this is a differential equation of the form it's a single order differential equation right um, what's the solution to this okay now what kind of a function can you have y prime what kind of a function can it be such that if you take the derivative of it and multiply it by some constant, when you add it, it gives you some constant, okay? In other words, uh, it doesn't give you something that's dependent on time. The only thing that it can be is a exponential function. It can't be a sine or cosine. Because when you take, if, if y was a function of sine, it was sine of something, you took the derivative, it would be cosine. When you, took, when you added them, it would be still time dependent, right? But if, it's, if, if y is some e, you take the derivative, then it's possible that you add it to uh, itself and you get a constant. So you can guess a solution. y equals some uh, number a e to the some constant, uh, um, uh, let's call it b times the time plus some other constant uh, capital B, let's say. So you're guessing a solution. And then you're seeing what does a, little b, and big b, what do they need to be so that this equation satisfies the differential equation? OK? So what would y prime be? What would be the derivative of this? Uh, in other words, what's dy dt, the derivative of this with respect to t? So it would be a, little b, e to the bt. Right? So then put it into this differential equation. K times A little b e to the bt plus w, which is some constant, times y is equal to vb. Okay, so now add these two, we can factor out the e to the bt. You have k a b plus w a e to the bt plus w b. So what needs to be true about this so that uh, the differential equation will be true for all times t? Well, if this whole thing needs to equal some constant, it can't have any time dependence. Therefore, the coefficient of e to the bt must be 0, right? So that it has no time dependence. So k a b plus wa must be equal to 0 in order for the y to satisfy the differential equation. So uh, from here, a, a doesn't matter what it is. We know that kb plus w must equal 0. In other words, b must be equal to what? In other words, the little b Uh, that is the power of the e, the little b must equal to negative w over k. Okay. 